Hey everyone, it's your favorite caffeine scientist, Green-Eyed Guide. In today's episode, we'll be breaking down the popular news claim, energy drinks double hospitalizations. Now, some of you see headlines that look like this, or like this, or like this. And when you see these headlines about energy drinks increasing ER visits, some of you think, oh, I knew it. I told you those drinks were poisonous. And some of you think this, well, I guess I'm gonna die. So what does this mean? If you drink energy drinks, what does this mean for you? In this episode, I'm going to review the headlines, the science, and what you can do if you're an energy drink lover. I'll even give you some energy drink recommendations too. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so again, we're breaking down the claim energy drinks have doubled ER visits. So first, let's look at the news. Now, this line comes from the February 2021 article in Eat This, Not That. The name of the article is called 12 Dangerous Side Effects of Energy Drinks. It says, in fact, over a five-year span, the number of energy drink-related visits to emergency departments doubled, climbing from 10,000 to 20,000. So basically, this article is saying that energy drinks are sending record number of people to the emergency room. So that's what the news says. Now let's look at what the science says. There are the three, here are the three most important things you need to know about this study on energy drinks and hospitalizations. Number one, where are the numbers coming from? The numbers come from national estimates of emergency department visits involving energy drinks from 2005 to 2011. Again, that's between 2005 and 2011. What's special about those years? Hold that thought. Number two, what do the numbers say? This report found the estimated number of emergency department visits involving energy drinks doubled from 10,000 to 20,000. Again, that's an increase from 10,000 to 20,000. That sounds like a lot, right? Hold that thought, we'll get to that. And the third thing you need to know about this study is they found roughly 42% of the hospital visits had to do with combinations of energy drinks and alcohol or other drugs. Okay, so that's what the science says. Now let's break that down and put it all together, okay? First, let's take another look at those years from 2007 to 2011. Do you know what big event happened in 2009 and 2010? Does anyone remember Four Loco, also known as Blackout in a Can? That whole fiasco where Four Loco was sending people to lethal levels of alcohol poisoning all went down around 2009 and Four Loco reformulated in 2000, sorry, 2010. Full disclosure, I'm married to a former fat brother and he tells me about how him and his buddies stocked up on Four Loco when they knew it was going to be reformulated. This is the sh that gives me nightmares, okay? For those of you that weren't there or don't know, Four Loco was 12% alcohol and had 500 milligrams of caffeine all in one 23 ounce can. That's seven shots of vodka and five Red Bulls. That's too much alcohol and too much caffeine all together in one can. Combining your uppers and downers is just never a good idea, okay? So that's what's special about those years. That all happened right during the critical data collection period of this report. This is a huge asterisk that gets completely glossed over when people just casually drop this stat in their articles talking about how energy drinks are bad. This is a huge detail that we need to talk about. Second of all, we need to talk about the number of hospital visits from 10,000 to 20,000. For context, there are more than 1 million drug-related visits to the hospital every year. That means even at the peak, these energy drink-related hospitalizations accounted for nearly 2% of all of these drug-related hospital visits. So when you put that into context, it's not as scary as maybe some of these headlines, you know, not as scary as some of these headlines make it seem. Finally, roughly 42% of those hospital visits had to do with people combining 
uh, energy drinks and alcohol or other drugs. We've already talked about the fiasco that was for logo, but that's just a portion of those visits. That means that 58% of those energy drink related visits involved energy drinks only, but which energy drinks and how much caffeine and what other ingredients were in the drinks, we'll never know because this level of detail is not collected. Before 2020 and COVID, I actually approached a few hospitals here in Milwaukee with a pilot study I wanted to do on energy drink related hospitalizations. And all the nurses I talked to said, when you come in the ER, we don't care what you had. We're just trying to save your life. And that's fair. In other words, my dog is chewing on her bone. Maybe you can hear her, maybe you can't. Let's keep going. In other words, no one is collecting this information. As a result, when journalists say energy drinks double the rate of hospitalizations, they're not helping people make smarter choices. If you're a journalist, stop dropping this statistic. It's irrelevant, it's outdated, and it's out of context. Instead, here's what energy drink articles should say. Number one, don't mix alcohol and energy drinks. This combination played a significant role in the number of energy drink related hospitalizations. Number two, know how much caffeine is too much. We can assume that a majority of these energy drink related hospitalizations had to do with people that had too much caffeine. And three, stop suggesting that all energy drinks are the same. Doing that ignores the role of the other ingredients in the energy drinks. Maybe in 2003, all energy drinks looked like this, but that is not the case anymore. We have energy drinks that look like this, which is nothing like the stereotypical energy drink. And that's just an example of what I've got lying around here on my desk. So again, energy drinks are so different. We can't just pretend they're all the same and have all the same formula. They don't. So what can you do if you're an energy drink lover? Well, shameless plug, you can check out my energy drink report card at greeneyedguide.com slash freebies. In that energy drink report card, I've rated the top selling energy drinks, coffees, and teas, and put them into categories of red or yellow or green. So the green ones are the ones you can drink every day. The yellow ones are the ones you can drink in moderation, kind of like eating pizza. And then the red ones are the ones you should not ever have. So again, that's energy drinks, coffees, and teas in the energy drink report card, greeneyedguide.com slash freebies. So you can find my recommendations there. But in conclusion, if you're someone like a shift worker or a teacher or a first responder, you probably rely on caffeine to help you get through the day. So understanding the science behind these claims about energy drinks and hospitalizations should help you make better decisions. In other words, I want to make sure that your caffeine choices are based on facts, not fear. If you have more questions about your favorite coffee or tea or energy drink, or there's other popular energy drink claims or news articles you'd like me to review, you can drop them in the comment section or send me a note via Instagram at Green Eyed Guide. Otherwise, you can email me at info at greeneyedguide.com. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for listening and thank you, thank you for supporting Green Eyed Guide. Take care.